Hey guys and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to show you how to set up Vault Warden behind a reverse proxy using Traffic and Docker. Hosting your own Vault Warden instance gives you complete control over your data and enhances your security by keeping your sensitive information private. We'll start by making sure the server is up to date and then we'll clone the GitHub repo I've prepared for us. After that we'll update the environment file with your URL and email address for the SSL certificate. And then finally, we'll bring up the Docker containers using Docker Compose. It's pretty straightforward, so let's get to it. So the first thing we want to do is get logged into our server and make sure everything is up to date. I'm already logged in here, so we'll go ahead and paste in the command to update our server. You can find these commands in the description below. Now that we have updated our server, we need to clone the GitHub repo for the Vault Warden docker compose file and the environment file I have prepared. Cloning this repo is going to create us a new folder called Vault Warden. So we're going to switch into that folder. Then inside this folder, do it in ls-a for all. It's going to list out the environment file and the docker compose file. The environment file is the file that we need to modify. It will inject the environment variables into the docker compose once we spin up the containers. Inside VS Code here we can use the command code and then the file name .env. And then here we can see the two variables we need to update. I have prepared a URL over at DuckDNS for this example. And then we'll just use my usual email for the SSL certificate. Essentially, a reverse web proxy works like this. When a user types in a URL, such as uh, stevesvault.duckdns.org, the traffic is directed over the internet to the IP address specified in the DNS records. In a traditional setup, this IP would then be pointed directly to the origin servers. However, exposing the servers directly to the internet can pose significant security risks. With a reverse proxy setup, the DNS records on the internet will point directly to the reverse proxy, and then the reverse proxy will then route the traffic to whichever origin server it is configured for. Using a reverse proxy helps protect the origin servers by acting as a middleman between the internet and your servers. Keeping the origin servers hidden, you mitigate the risk of attackers discovering and exploiting vulnerabilities in the other services that it may be running. In order for the reverse proxy to work, you must have ports 80 and 443 pointed to your reverse proxy container or server. This takes place on your router or firewall. You would just need to look into your router manufacturer or firewall manufacturer for port forwarding or virtual servers. Well, I'm sure you can just YouTube your brand name router or firewall and port forwarding and find plenty of YouTube videos and documents on how to do it. Now that we've updated these two variables, go ahead and control S to save this file. And back down at the terminal window, we can type in docker compose up space dash D for detached. And this is going to pull down our two images, our traffic and vault warden images and apply the uh, docker compose config. And now we can see here at the bottom that our Docker containers have started. It will take about a minute or so for Vault Warden to spin up, give or take, depending on your hardware. We can do a Docker PS for process to see the Docker processes. And the middle container there, Vault Warden, we can see under status that the health of it is just now starting. So let's just give it a minute to go to healthy. And there we go. Now we can see that our Vault Warden container is healthy. If we bring up our browser and browse over to the URL that we specified in the environment file. And here we are. We need to go ahead and create a user. So create an account here at the bottom. I would advise to check this box at the bottom here to check known data breaches for this password and go ahead and click on create account. I am getting this error message because I used a weak password and it did find it in the data breach database. Uh, I am going to go ahead and continue to use this password for this example. 
However, if you get this error message during setup, go ahead and click on no here and go back and change your password to something that is more unique and is not on the data breach password list. I'm gonna go ahead and click yes here to continue. And here we are, it's created my account. And go ahead and log in. And it works pretty much just like Bitwarden. Now if we go, we can create a test item here. Next, we can set up the browser extension. I have added the Bitwarden browser extension URL to the description below. Go ahead and browse over to it and select the browser you're using to install the extension. For this example here, we're using Firefox and just go ahead and add it to our browser. Now that we have the extension installed, we'll go ahead and open it up. Under the email address field, we're gonna change the logging in on from bitwarden.com to self-hosted. And then at the top, we're gonna to use the server URL. Be sure to specify the HTTPS secure protocol, and then your domain that you used in the environment variable. And that's it. We don't need the custom environments, just the self-hosted. Go ahead and click on save. And now we should be able to log in with the email credentials we just set up. And here we are. And there is our test user that we set up and we'll go ahead and set up a new test from the browser extension test two we got it here and we'll go check our vault and we can see our test two user and that should just about cover it if you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave them below. And as always, thanks for watching.